Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. It is a crime that can go unnoticed. A look at what's called the hole punch crime and how a little hole could bleed victims bank accounts coming up. And the Alamo Dome is one of several mass vaccination sites. The warning from the city before you register at the site and why some are being turned away. But first. It is the story of perseverance starting in South Texas, reaching to the state capitol. With his birthday just weeks away, a teenager's only wish is his mother's full recovery. as She battles the COVID-19 virus, fighting for her life in the Rio Grande Valley. Emilian Sosa, an only child, was raised by a single mother and has taken action into his own hands with the help of friends and family. As the night team's Jonathan Cotto reports, he's grabbed the attention of the governor. This is 14-year-old Emilian Sosa playing his violin virtually for his mom who is currently in critical condition battling COVID-19 in the Rio Grande Valley. 48-year-old Erika Calderon tested positive late December. She was hospitalized on January 4th, and since then her condition has deteriorated. That means that sooner or later they're going to disconnect her, and that is the worst thing we ever want. Or that we wanted to tap her. Calderon is in need of ECMO therapy, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, a therapy that aims to relieve stress off the lungs and heart to promote healing, a procedure that is not available in the valley. And this might be the next hope for my mom to recover and most importantly be healed and come back. At the thought of losing his mother, Emilian wrote a letter to Governor Greg Abbott, a letter that quickly went viral on Twitter and immediately got the attention of the governor himself. Abbott says with the help of the chief of the Texas Division of Emergency Management and Dr. Zerwas, the equipment his mother needs was located. Emilian says he hasn't yet wrote the governor back, but says he's extremely thankful. But if he's watching this, well, I just want to say, Governor Abbott, um, thank you for making this possible, helping us find a helicopter company, a hospital where she could be sent, where she will be treated with this therapy. His mom is expected to be transported at any moment's notice to Houston. Doctors told the family they want to ensure her condition is stable for flight. And again, that was Jonathan Cotto reporting. Let's take a look at where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home tonight. The seven day average rising to 1,567 tonight. Nine deaths were also reported today. Meanwhile, another drop in hospitalizations. 1,341 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized. 394 are in the intensive care unit and 255 are on ventilators. We know the supply of COVID-19 vaccine is not meeting demand and shipments of the vaccine are not entirely predictable. Here's the latest on registration at the mega vaccination sites in town. The Alamo Dome set to open registration tomorrow at 2 p.m. Again, open registration tomorrow at 2 p.m. You can sign up for an appointment by calling 311 or register online on the city's website. Metro Health says they open up registration as well at 2 p.m. daily. A reminder, you must be within phase 1A or 1B to be eligible for a vaccination. That includes frontline health care workers, those who live in long term care facilities and people who are over the age of 65. You're also eligible if you are 16 and older with a chronic health condition. Everyone who secures a registration will be screened at the Alamo Dome. The nurses go over a list to find out whether they meet the conditions for 1A or 1B, and if they don't, then they are asked to leave and not, not actually receive the vaccine. And people who signed up to volunteer and help distribute vaccine at the Alamo Dome were able to get a dose of vaccine after their volunteer shift, but that policy could change next month. Metro Health says, quote, since we do not have set information on shipments next month, everything is subject to change depending on availability. End quote. When it comes to registration at University Health's site, the slots at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall have been filled through February 19th. On Saturday, the two well-med clinics on the city's south and west side will open their registration hotline. Those who are eligible can call 833-968-1745 starting January 30th. Meanwhile, we take an in-depth look at the current COVID-19 vaccines. If you missed tonight's special, you can watch it beginning tomorrow morning. Just log on to KSAT.com.
Well, as part of our KSAT community efforts today, I hosted a virtual town hall on mental health. Before the pandemic, one in five adults dealt with mental health concerns, according to the National Alliance of Mental Illness. At the peak of the pandemic back in June, though, that number rose to 40 percent. Our panel included experts in children's health, substance use disorders and domestic violence. They say there are signs to look for when someone is in need of help. Somebody who becomes even more withdrawn, uh, somebody who may have more anxiety over uh, different things in their life, which wasn't there before, um, more use, you know, more use of drugs and alcohol, uh, more out of control kind of behaviors. You can watch the full virtual town hall right now. Just head to KSAT.com or to KSATcommunity.com. The pandemic changing the way the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo will look this year. Organizers taking away the carnival, adding mandatory masks. But County Commissioner Tommy Calvert says COVID tests should also be mandated at the rodeo. With several thousand still expected to attend the stock show every day, spokeswoman Lauren Side says testing would present a challenge financially and logistically. Side says it's not something they're currently looking to do, but it would be up to the discretion of their executive committee. Meanwhile, we are hearing a decision on Fiesta and whether it will happen or not is expected to be announced this week. Thieves are buying themselves more time to steal your money. The victim of a recent car break in wants to warn other trailhead users to be on alert. She shows the night team's Patty Santos about something called the hole punch crime and how it nearly went unnoticed. Thieves are becoming more inconspicuous to buy themselves more time, says Rebecca Todd. Everything was exactly where I left it in the car. The car's uh, doors were still locked. She says her purse was hidden, but it apparently didn't work. It was a while until she noticed her wallet was gone. Several hundred dollars was wiped out of my um, checking account and they had also hit all of my credit cards. The police officer taking her report quickly pointed out a small hole punched next to the keyhole where thieves managed to disengage the alarm, break in and lock up after themselves for an easy getaway. They want to leave everything untouched so that you aren't concerned because they don't want you to report, you know, the card stolen before they can spend all the money. It happened Monday at the North Loop 1604 Trailheads parking lot a busy place for bikers and runners. But car break-ins can happen anywhere, says bicyclist Jeff Grossman. I don't take much stuff with me. I just take uh, my keys, my ID, maybe 20 bucks, which I carry on my person. San Antonio police offer this advice. Take your stuff with you or hide it out of sight and call 911 if you see someone suspicious in the parking lot. Many runners say they are always on alert when their groups go out into the trails. We'll have somebody, um, instead of running their full out mileage, they'll go out 10 minutes and come back and just kind of stay around the area to make sure that, uh, um, you know, that the vehicles are safe. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Other big stories tonight, 21-year-old Sasha Scar is wanted for murder. Police say she shot and killed a man at an apartment on La Contera Parkway. Police say they responded to the Towers Complex yesterday after a woman called to report she had not heard from a man for several days. Inside one of those apartments, officers found 34-year-old Martel DeRowan, who was pronounced dead. The shots fired at the South Park Mall parking lot today. Police say a man driving a big rig pulled over, ended up running from police with a gun. Officers say he made it into the mall. Security eventually kicked him out where officers confronted him in the parking lot. The man in his 20s shot and killed. Witnesses say they saw the man point the gun at an officer. Body cameras from officers involved are being reviewed tonight. Meanwhile, the man who led law enforcement on a cross, con cross county chase yesterday identified as 48 year old Felix Santos. He sped away after he was pulled over in Pleasanton and drove from Atascosa County into Bear County while firing several rounds and live streaming the entire chase on Facebook. Deputies were able to lay down spike strips to blow out some of his tires, as you saw there. Investigators say Santos exchanged gunfire with deputies. He was shot, taken to the hospital, where he later died. Santos facing several charges, including being a felon in possession of a firearm. 
Tonight's going to be the coldest night of the next seven days of the foreseeable future here. Already temperatures plummeting down into the 40s in many locations. We're 50 degrees officially in San Antonio. You get to Port SA 53, 51 Stinson. Now down to 48 Randolph in the Converse Universal City area. But you get into the 40s in the Hill Country in the coolest region right now. Bernie Stage Airfield at 37 degrees. I do think we will be at and slightly below freezing throughout the Hill Country tomorrow morning. Bernie about 30, 31 degrees. Bulverde about 32 along with Canyon Lake, Kerrville even into the upper 20s, just barely above freezing. Helotus, Rio Medina, we're talking a degree, so it's a close call. If you have very sensitive vegetation, you may not want to even take the chance tonight because it's going to be close. We're going to talk about how tomorrow's going to be the coldest afternoon of the next seven days and a little bit of moisture in our forecast coming up. Thank you, Adam. Still ahead on the night beat, a father and son in San Antonio facing charges linked to the chaos at the Capitol. What federal documents are detailing about these latest arrests? And just weeks following the insurgents, a new alert from Homeland Security. The warning coming up. Plus, an update on the hostage situation in Austin that ended in a murder-suicide last night. What we're learning about the two medical professionals that were involved. Next on The Night Beat. SWAT teams surrounded a medical office for hours in Austin before finding two people dead. It's a breaking news story. We first brought you on the night beat last night. Today, police say a physician with terminal cancer killed a pediatrician and then himself. Officers, officers say Dr. Bharat Naru Manshi was holding five workers hostage, including Dr. Catherine Lindley Dodson. Some of the hostages were able to escape and some of them were ultimately released. Dodson was eventually killed. Police say Narumanshi visited that office in the last week or two, wanting to volunteer, but was turned down. Police have not released a clear motive tonight. A San Antonio father and son facing charges linked to the Capitol chaos earlier this month. James Sonny Uptmore and his son Chance both identified in these photographs that the FBI obtained as evidence. The pair are seen at the Capitol during the insurrection on January 6th. They said the visit was part of a five day visit to Washington, D.C. to celebrate the younger man's birthday. They were released on bond and have their next court appearance on February 3rd. Meanwhile, Matthew Mazzocco, who was arrested in Stone Oak for his link to the riots, will continue his hearings in Washington, D.C. A new alert coming three weeks after those riots at the Capitol. The Department of Homeland Security issued a rare public warning about domestic terror threats. The bulletin saying right wing militants and lone wolves may target elected officials and government facilities and were emboldened by the Capitol riots. 400 suspects have been identified with hundreds more under investigation. All right, the weather situation interesting <laughs> is that a I good kinda, i like yeah. today i mean i thought yeah. it, was, nice. it was nice it was cool didn't care for the cedar yeah oh, we're gonna get into that we had the cedar breeze today so that north wind kept our mountain cedar count high it was elevated up there and tonight is going to be the coldest night of the foreseeable future tomorrow is going to be the coldest afternoon of the seven day forecast and i do anticipate a hill country freeze widespread in the hill country tonight through tomorrow morning and then a little bit of dampness to start your Saturday. So we have all this to bring together here. Let's start with temperatures across the state. We're cooling off quite a bit already 30 Amarillo 34 in Lubbock, Abilene, Dallas at 36 here in South Texas. It's taken us a little bit longer to see those temperatures really fall off 50 in San Antonio 53 Pleasanton, but you get to Hondo 41 Uvalde 46 along with Kerrville Fredericksburg at 42. I want to reiterate, we are expecting a freeze in the hill country tonight, and even some portions of northern northwestern Bear County could briefly hit the freezing point as well. We're thinking about 35, 36 for a low temperature Uvalde to Hondo, 34 in San Antonio, New Braunfels about 33, and then some upper 20s in the hill country. You can get to Timberwood Park about 32 degrees along with Leon Springs and Bernie Fair Oaks Ranch area about 30, 31 we think for the low temperature. It's going to be a close call for many locations, including Holotus, Myco, Lake Hills, and uh, parts of Bear County as well. Maybe a degree or two shy of the freezing point. We're thinking about 35 downtown San Antonio. Then we get into the afternoon. 
Look at these high temperatures only in the upper 50s to right near 60 degrees. So definitely below average for a change. We're going to be about five degrees below average tomorrow and then temperatures do rebound rather efficiently by Friday back into the 60s. Saturday we jump up into the 70s, but I really want to point out on Saturday if you have morning plans through about the noon hour, it's going to be wet and damp outside because we'll have another round of fog drizzle and a few sprinkles, but it's only going to add up to a few hundredths of an inch. All right, that cedar breeze today it was out of the north. You felt it. We gusted up to 35 miles per hour earlier today when it was uh, gusty. Now the wind has slammed on the brakes, so you don't even notice it, but it didn't help us with our mountain cedar count considered high today at nearly 5,000. We also had mold at 840 and Elm on the low end with a count of 60, but the first time Elm has been in the pollen count so far this season. All right, looking at our pattern, we still do have a lot of activity out there, just not so much over South Texas. We have these clouds coming in from the Pacific and that's all we have this mid and upper level moisture streaming overhead, giving us some of the mid and high clouds but nothing to really produce rainfall. Where we have the thick moisture, that's all on the west coast. Big atmospheric river coming over California. I mean, we are talking five to 10 feet of snow in the Sierra Nevadas from this moisture coming on shore. Not inches, five to 10 feet of snow. So that atmospheric river definitely providing them with copious amounts of moisture around here, Rain chances are on the low end. Tomorrow, just a cold start to the day at 34. By the afternoon, we'll be up near 60, but I do think many locations in the upper 50s. Then we get into Friday, still a decent amount of cloud cover, 64 by Saturday. Morning dampness with that drizzle and sprinkle activity, but afternoon sunshine in 70s, so you'll forget about that dampness pretty quickly. And Sunday, sunny, right near 70. Thank you, Adam. All right, the Spurs did play tonight, and yep. what a game it was, Greg. You saw the end of that game with I me. Did. Keldon Johnson was a beast, so yeah. was DeJounte Murray. What a finish after they were down going into the fourth quarter. Now, look at who they've beaten this year already. The Clippers and Lakers are now one of the beasts of the East, the Boston Celtics. We've got the highlights when we come back, and also the Texans have a new head coach, and Jason Witten retires again. Monday, 48 hours later, the Spurs are cleared to go up against the Boston Celtics tonight at home. DeMar DeRozan going baseline. They watch this spin into the lane for the bucket. Right at that, LaMarcus Aldridge connects from the corner for the three. Spurs down five, though. Under 10 seconds to go in the first. Rudy Gata, Jakob Pertl for the slam. The Celtics have a five-point lead after one. Spurs explode in the second. Back-to-back -back three-pointers from LaMarcus. Capped off a 14-2 run for a three-point lead. Then with six seconds to go, Patty Mills steals the inbounds pass, takes it back for a 12-point lead. And then on the inbound, Keldon Johnson pokes the ball loose. Lonnie Walker is there to knock down the jumper at the buzzer. The Spurs in the quarter on a 29-6 run. 61-47 Spurs at the break. The Spurs take their largest lead when Keldon Johnson's shot is off the mark, but Aldridge is there to put it in for a 15-point lead. The wheels fall off from that point on at this time. The Spurs wagon. Patty Mills turns it over. Jalen Brown throws it down on the other end. Spurs lead down to one as a result. Then Kimbo Walker knocks down the three, and it's Boston a 21-3 run. Celtics 84-82 going into the fourth. Spurs up two now, under 15 to play. DeJounte Murray picks Walker's pocket, takes it back for the two-handed punch. Celtics had a shot to tie it up at the end, but is off the iron. Spurs win a close one, 110 to 106. All five starters in double figures, led by DeMar with 21. We held on, especially against a, a talented team, um, one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. We held on. We knew they was going to make a push, make a run. We didn't get discouraged by it. You know, we had a couple of lapses, couldn't score offensively, and they came down, took advantage of it. But, you know, we held on tight, um, was able to pull it out. All right, next up, it'll be Denver on Friday at 7.30. And before tonight's game, Pop says he expects Derek White's return to be this weekend. NBA All-Star voting starts this Thursday, despite the fact right now there will not be an All-Star game again this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The league announcing voting will commence at 11 a.m. tomorrow. We'll end on Tuesday, February the 16th at 10.59 p.m. San Antonio time. Gives fans a chance to decide the All-Star starters as discussions continue about holding the All-Star game possibly at a later date. The 2021 All-Star game was supposed to be held in Indianapolis. 
list, but last November was postponed until 2024 in Indy. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Jason Witten is retiring from the NFL again. He made an announcement today after 17 seasons playing professional football. He intends to sign a one-day contract and retires a member of the Dallas Cowboys in March when his contract with the Las Vegas Raiders expires. Witten, who's now 38 years old, played 16 seasons with the Cowboys and one with the Raiders last season. Witten played in more games than any other tight end in NFL history and is second only in receptions and yards to Hall of Famer Tony Gonzalez. Remember, Witten retired once before in 2017, spent one season in the broadcast booth for Monday Night Football for unretiring and hitting the field for one more season. The Houston Texans have hired Baltimore Ravens assistant head coach David Culley as their new head coach. That's according to the Houston Chronicle tonight, in part because he has worked with disgruntled quarterback Deshaun Watson. That's after it was reported early today that Bills defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier was a frontrunner. Culley, who's 65 years old, spent the last two seasons in Baltimore, just completed 27 years as an NFL coach. Culley was Baltimore's passing game corner and wide receivers coach. He was also the Chiefs assistant head coach from 2013 to 2000. 2016. Quarterback Deshaun Watson's suggestion of Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy did not receive a second interview, according to Sports Illustrated. The Aggies and the Roadrunners release their 2021 football schedules next. Southeastern Conference released Fight Texas Aggies 2021 football schedule today. That includes seven games at Kyle Field, including four SEC foes, including Alabama and Auburn. That's after the Aggies finished their 2020 season on an eight-game win streak. 91 overall, finished number four in the country by both the Associated Press and Coaches Polls. Here's a look at their home schedule. They'll open up against Kent State, followed by New Mexico, Mississippi State. There's Alabama on the ninth. There's South Carolina, Auburn on the sixth. And Prairie View wrapping it all up on November the 20th. UTSA likewise releasing their football schedule today. As a result, these are their home games opening up with Lamar, Middle Tennessee, UNLV, Rice, Southern Miss, and they wrap it up against UAB in the Dome on November the 20th. San Antonio Sports High School Football All-Star Game presented by HEB is a goal for this Saturday at Hero Stadium. As many as 112 student athletes will be representing 62 high schools on this field this weekend. We visited with a gold team coached by David Branscombe of Brandeis High School yesterday. Today we check in with a black team coached by Reagan High School's Lyndon Hamilton following their workout at Hero Stadium. The All-Star team also includes Wagner running back L.J. Butler, Clemens quarterback Max Dinamenico, and Judson defensive line anchor Nathaniel Pryor. It's a bit different, you know, you got all these Justin guys on defense. I'm like, y'all were just tackling me two months ago. Now we're like, you know, going hard in practice, but uh, it's real cool. It's real cool to see everyone come together. You know, it's, it's like a family here, so it's cool. You know, it's amazing, you know, because it shows you all the great people around San Antonio. You get to play against great competition and, uh, you know, college level athletes. Foes now friends kick off for the San Antonio Sports High School All-Star Football game presented by HEB is set for 2 p.m. Saturday, and there are a limited amount of tickets available for $10 apiece. Kind of cool they all get to kind of wrap it up as, mm -hmm. as all friends. Yeah, I got a <laughs> kick out of what the quarterback said. I guess we're just tackling me two months ago. <laughs> right. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at this. Atlantic puffins are on a comeback. <laughs> the birds known for their colorful beaks and waddling walk. They're so cute. Have puffed up their numbers to about 1,300 pairs. At one time, puffins had virtually disappeared from Maine, the only U.S. state where they nest. But conservation efforts to reduce the number of herring, herring taken from state waters have come in handy for the puffins. They feast on the fish, which provides needed nourishment for them and their offspring. All right, surprise return caught on camera. Master Sergeant Hector Rivera just returned from a seven-month deployment in Kuwait, and his dog KO's excitement easy to see. Kato was mm -hmm. being fostered through Dogs of Deployment, a program where families volunteer to house dogs while their owners are deployed for work. While Rivera was overseas, Kato learned some new tricks like closing doors, responding to commands in Spanish. Look at that tail. You think he's, he's so excited? excited. That's yeah, so that's, cute. That's great. So tomorrow's going to be a, co a cool day, relatively speaking, to what we've had. 34 in the morning, 60 in the afternoon, 70s by Saturday. But it will be a damp start to the day. Wet roads, wet trails, something to keep in mind Saturday morning. Sunday, nothing but sunshine. 70 degrees. So looking uh, pretty comfortable this weekend, but a very dry outlook. Not much more than a few hundredths of an inch on Saturday. Thank you, Adam. That's it for the night beat, GMSA at 4.30. Good night.